The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Perhaps you are one of the thousands of men and women who has recently received a postcard or a telephone call from your Equitable Society representative. Please be sure to listen to the middle commercial on the Equitable program Friday night, your Equitable representative told you. It's an important message for men and women who want to continue to be self-supporting after they're 60 years old. That's why the Equitable Life Assurance Society calls it the Independent 60s Plan. I'll give you further information in about 14 minutes. Tonight's FBI file, The Hollywood Horseman. In at least one respect, nations are like children, for the growth of either depends on a combination of things. Ours is a young, growing country, but its continued growth may very well be dependent upon our conquering the crime wave. In the minds of many who have studied our social structure, there is grave doubt that a nation can long continue healthy, which sees a major crime committed within its borders every 18 and 9 tenths seconds. Every hour throughout the past year has seen the commission of crime after crime until, at the year's end, the total showed that an average of 12 felonious assaults or murders took place every 60 minutes. Those are figures to give pause to the most carefree among us. For if it was true when Abraham Lincoln said that this nation could not long exist part slave and part free, then it is even truer today that we cannot long continue with the army of criminals growing larger every hour. Tonight's file opens high in one of the mountains that have run through our western states. A young man and woman are riding horseback along a lonely trail as storm clouds gather threateningly overhead. Looks to me like it's fixing the rain, ma'am. I hope it does. Why is that? Maybe then the clouds will go away and we'll get that real western right. sunshine. I just can't go home without a tan. Well, if it starts to rain, ma'am, it'll rain hard. Oh, out there. Reckon maybe we better head back to the ranch. Oh, no, Earl, please, let's not go back. I want to see this country. We don't have anything like this back east. Don't reckon you do. Get Earl, how long have you been working at the dude ranch? A couple months. You wouldn't know my friend, Sonny Collier. She stayed there last summer. No, ma'am, I wouldn't. That's how we happened to hear about the place. Well, I'm mighty happy you did, ma'am. Beat it, boy. Come on. Beat Hey, I think I just felt a drop of rain. Yeah, I reckon it's not going to hold off no longer. Should we ride through it? No, there's a cave a little yonder. We can take shelter there. We're we can't just we... stay there till it stops raining. Now, come on. Beat it, boy. Come on. Just round the bend. Ooh, look at it come down now. Yeah, hey, you're getting soaked. I don't mind. Cave's right ahead here now. Uh, there it is. Come on. Oh, oh. It's really wet. Slow boy. All right, boy. Yeah, here we are. All right. Good rain. Oh. Yeah, let me help you down, oh. man. Thank you. We can take the horses in with us. Oh. Here's the entrance right here. Follow me, ma'am. All right. Shelly here. Well, this is it. Gosh, it's a scary looking place. We won't have to stay in here long. That rain will quit real soon, then we'll get going. You're not going any place. Huh? Put up your hands, both of you.
Later that day, in a state police barracks, FBI Special Agent Jim Taylor is greeted by Sergeant Howard Woods. Jim, I didn't expect to be seeing you this soon. Oh, I made a lucky plane connection, Howard. Your wire said that you spotted one of those draft evaders we have listed in the circular. Uh-huh. Charlie Baker. We're looking for his brother Pete, too, you know. I know. But they weren't in town together. Huh. Charlie Baker was spotted by the marshal yesterday coming out of a liquor store. Baker pulled a gun, shot the marshal, and fled into the hills. Uh, was the marshal badly wounded? No, he'll be okay. You're sure of the ident? Yes, the marshal was positive. Oh, I see. We chased him as long as we could, but we had to stop when it got dark. Yeah. It's hard enough finding somebody in these woods when it's light, Jim. And at night, it's just about impossible. Was the search resumed this morning? Yes, every trooper we could spare is out, but there are not enough manpower for a job like this, I'm afraid. Have you been with the searchers, Howard? Yes, until about noon today. Then I had to go over to a place called the Bar E Z Dude Ranch. They reported that a young girl who's staying there and one of the hired hands are both missing. So I had to set up a searching party for them. <laughs> Looks like you're in the searching party business. <laughs> I think it's all right. Howard, do you suppose the Baker brothers have been hiding up in those hills since the middle of the war? Mm, could have been. Well, it's a long time to stay in those woods. Well, if they had enough ammo, they could get plenty of food to keep them going. Yeah, that's true. Oh, excuse me. Certainly. Sergeant Wood speaking. Uh, yes, Clayton. You have? Where? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, all right. Keep searching and report back in an hour. That was one of our men, Jim. He's found the missing ranch girl's purse in a cave up in the mountains. No. He also reported there were signs of a struggle inside the cave. No trace of the girl? No. Well, Howard, if she was with one of the hired hands... I'm and... not worrying about him, Jim. My concern is that the cave is in the direction that Charlie Baker took after shooting the marshal. Come on, Charlie, wake up. Come on, boy, come on. Get up. Come on. What time is it? Four o'clock. In the morning? No. The afternoon. God. When'd you get home? Mm, sometime last night. I had trouble. Somebody see you? Uh huh. Where? In town. When? Yesterday afternoon. I told you never to go into town during the day. I needed whiskey. You could have waited. I was thirsty. What happened? Cops spotted me. I shot him. Kill him? I don't know. I think so. If you didn't, they'll be looking for us real good. Where's the whiskey? Left it in the cave. After all that trouble? I didn't mean to get into trouble, Pete. Uh, you never mean it. And there's something else. What? I brought back some folks. Huh? A guy and a dame. You brought him here? Yeah. Why? Well, I get chased out of town. I really dig for it. I headed for one of the caves on Pine Slope. I was hiding there, and they come in. I thought they were the law, so I stuck them up. But why did you bring them back here? Well, I couldn't let them go, could I? Why'd you kill them? I was afraid it'd make too much noise. Oh. Where are they? Out in the shed. And they're tied up. You know who they are? Well, I didn't ask them. Should I kill them now? No. Let's eat something first. Earl? Hmm? If you could untie my hand, then I could let you loose. Can't move my fingers that much, ma'am. Well, where's your knife? I reckon I don't have one. I never heard of a cowboy without a knife. You have now, ma'am. Look, how would this work? When that man comes back, I'll get him over on one side of the room, and then you could sneak up behind him and knock him down. That man carries a gun, ma'am. I'd always heard cowboys weren't afraid of guns. You heard wrong, ma'am. But you could Look, I ain't a hankering to get my brains beat out, none. I, uh... Oh... Uh... I guess I might as well drop it. What? This act. I'm no cowboy. Huh? I'm a movie cowboy. Look, what are you talking about? I'm an actor. 
All this shucks, ma'am, and I reckon that's all phony. I never talked like that until I got to Gower Street in Hollywood. You mean that you were just a cowboy in the movies? Mm Mm-hmm. I was in 11 of those outdoor epics. Oh. You never heard of me. I wasn't a star. I was just the guy who said they went that away, Sheriff. But, well, how come you're working at the Dude Ranch? It's a job. I wasn't going any place in pictures, and I'm not getting any younger, so I decided to see if I could sell my acting experience to people like you who wouldn't know the difference between me and a real cowboy. That's just dandy. I'm sorry. Now I guess we'll have to stay here forever. No, we'll get out. How? I don't think this guy is as tough as he pretends to be. How do you know? It's a matter of typecasting. He looks too much like the villain. Oh, look, girl, this is real life, not Hollywood. I think... Wait. Well, have you come to let us out? No. Just just want to see if you're still tied up. We are. I'll see for myself. Look, when are you going to let us out of here? I can't rightly say. I'd be willing to pay you if you let us go. I'd be willing to give you a hundred dollars. I have to talk to my brother about that. Well, when will you talk to your brother? That's my business. I'll see you later. Jim, ever since we found that empty whiskey bottle up at the cave, I had the feeling Baker might have killed a couple. Well, the prints on the bottle might not be Baker's. No, that Bagley's brew is an unusual brand, Jim. Come on. That's the kind the liquor store man said Baker bought. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, it seems to me that if Baker was going to kill him, he'd have done it at the cave. Maybe. Come on, Lolly. Come on. Hey, tell me. Could we spot anything in these woods from the air? No, not very much. I flew over this part with a forest service ranger a couple of weeks ago. All you can see is the tops of trees. Oh. They picked a real cozy hideout for themselves. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh. All right. Isn't it logical to assume that anybody building a cabin or a shack in these woods would build it near the trail? Yeah, that's right. Well, then maybe we could send one man up each of the trails. See if we can get a lead that way. We're riding on the only trail there is. Oh. Well, that takes care of that idea. Hey, maybe this is the way. We're right in the middle of the hunting season, aren't we? Uh Uh-huh. Well, can anybody hunt here or do you have to get a license? Uh, It'll cost you two dollars down at the county courthouse. Well, suppose we ask every hunter who gets a license to keep an eye out for the bakers or for the missing couple. They'll all be armed. It won't be like asking somebody to take a chance without a gun. That might be a help, Jim. Well, it's the best I can come up with at the moment. Steady up, boys. As soon as we get back to town, let's stop by the courthouse. You think the man's ever coming back? Sure. He'll let us out, too. I wish I felt that confident. You would if you worked in as many pictures as I did. These Western things always have a happy ending. You just wait and see. Here it is. Uh, This here is my brother. Oh. Hello. Hello. Well, did you talk to him? Uh huh. Did you tell him I'd pay $100? Uh huh. Well, will he let us go? Uh huh. What did I tell you, miss? Oh. My brother wants to talk. You go ahead, Pete. You say you'd give $100 if we let you go? That's right. Well, if you can pay $100, you can pay a lot more. Oh, she can't. Shut up. We want to get out of here, too. We need some money to get where we want to go. Well, I'll give it to you. We want $3,000. What? You heard him. But look, I haven't got that much money. Then think of where you can get it. You better think fast, too, lady. Look, why don't you two jokers stop? You're just like the villains in a bad B picture. I've been in movies where they throw you two bums out for being hammy. Now, come on. Untie these ropes. (laughs) 
This ain't no movie, mister. We mean business. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI helps promote national security. Now let's talk briefly about another kind of security. Security for men and women who want to look forward to independent 60s. Uh, independent 60s? What does that mean? It's very simple, Bob. You're 60 years old or 65. You've retired and you're completely self-supporting, 100% independent. That's the goal of every self-respecting American, Bob. After all... Who wants to spend the end of his life as a dependent on relatives or charity? I certainly don't. To one man, independent 60s means boarding a train every November and heading for the sunny south. No more long, cold winters for us, Margaret. To another, independent 60s means catching up with all the fishing he missed in his busy years. Yes, every man has his own dreams. And, Bob, whatever yours may be, don't just trust to luck to make that dream come true. Start right now by investigating the famous Independent 60s plan offered by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Well, what's the good of investigating something I probably can't afford? I'm not made of money, you know. Well, if that's all that's holding you back, Bob, then your Equitable Society representative has a very pleasant surprise for you. He'll work out an Independent 60s plan that's geared to your present income. Actually, if you're between the ages of 30 and 45 and covered by Social Security, you'll be amazed how little this equitable plan costs, considering how much it does for you. At any rate, it costs absolutely nothing to find out. Your Equitable Society representative will give you the facts and figures. Get in touch with him soon. Or write care of this station to the home office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Now back to tonight's file, The Hollywood Horseman. FBI, in helping to bring you this series of radio programs, hopes that through them you may learn something of the habits, the morals, and the behavior patterns of criminals. For this is a crime prevention program, and the only way to have you help prevent crime is to make you so familiar with criminals that you will not only abhor them, you will understand their sometimes complex mechanisms. The criminals you see in tonight's FBI file have one thing in common with most other lawbreakers, and that is a contempt for the moral standards by which most of us live. To them, the commandment which says that thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, nor anything that is thy neighbor's, means less than nothing. Criminals do not break the Ten Commandments, because for the most part, they do not even recognize the existence of those rules for decent living. If they did recognize the code, they would not so often break the simple unadorned commandment, thou shalt not kill. Tonight's file continues early the next morning at the office of Sergeant Woods. Howard, I stopped by the courthouse on the way in. We've got three volunteer deputies already. Mm, good. Have there been any other word? Not a thing. We resume searching at dawn, but nobody's reported in with a single lead. Mm. You know, after seeing those hills again, I think the only chance we've got of finding them is getting a lucky break. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Oh, uh, Mr. Phillips is giving every applicant for a hunting license a set of pictures of the Baker brothers. Good. Maybe we'll get a lead that way. Oh, excuse me. Sure. Sergeant Woods speaking. Yes. You have? Well, bring him back here immediately. That was one of our men, Jim. He's out at the dude ranch. Earl Douglas, the missing hired hand, just rode in a couple of minutes ago. Alone. This Charlie and his brother came in to see us. They said they were in trouble. They wanted $3,000 to let Mr. Sedgwick go. They've crossed the state line. That's kidnapping, Jim. That's right, Howard. Well, go on, please. I told them not to pay, and they slugged me. Well, they weren't so anxious to fight when they were drafted. 
Miss Sedgwick promised to pay them, so this morning they blindfolded me and Charlie led me and my horse partway down the mountain. Then he took off the blindfold and told me to go ahead. Where to? Back to the dude ranch to get the money from Miss Sedgwick's parents. I see. Then I'm supposed to meet Charlie tonight at the fork in the trail near the cave. Was that all? No, sir. I heard them say last night that they weren't going to release Miss Sedgwick. They're just going to take the money and run. You say you couldn't lead us back up to that cabin? No, sir, I couldn't. I was blindfolded when we got there and blindfolded when I left. Uh -huh. Have you spoken to the girl's parents yet? No, sir. As soon as I got back to the ranch, a trooper got me and brought me in here. I see. Howard, the first thing we've got to do is see Miss Sedgwick's parents. All right, Jim. We can't make a move now without their permission. They have to be advised of everything we know, and then they've got to make up their minds about the ransom. But even if they pay, Miss Sedgwick won't be returned. We'll tell that to them and see what they say. Now, well, come on. Let's get out there and find out what they want us to do. I just was in to see the girl. Well? Well, she's beefing. About what? Not eating. That's too bad. She said she ain't had nothing since yesterday morning. She'll live. I, I should have told that guy to bring me back a bottle of whiskey. When you get the cash, we'll get whiskey. If we get the cash. We'll get it. Well, that guy might not come back. He'll be there. Maybe he never went back to the ranch. I tell you, he'll be there. Well, suppose he ain't. You come back here, we'll take off anyway. What about her? I got that figured, too. We'll kill her. Oh, I just spoke to Mr. and Mrs. Sedgwick. She's in pretty bad shape. I can understand that. The doctor had to give her something to put her to sleep. Mr. Sedgwick said for us to do whatever we thought was best. Is he willing to pay the money, Mr. Taylor? Yes, Earl. I explained the whole thing to him. I told him the FBI policy was to ensure the safety of the victim before trying to arrest the kidnappers. I also told him what you told us. You mean about them not releasing her even after they got the money? That's right. Mr. Sedgwick wanted us to make all decisions. Well, all we can do now is keep him posted on development. What do we do, Jim? You got any notions? I don't know how well it'll work, but I've got an idea. Earl, where are you supposed to meet Baker? In the meadow, just beyond the cave he was hiding in. When? At nine tonight. We can surround that meadow at night, Jim, and Baker never know it. I know, Howard, but that wouldn't get Miss Sedgwick back. That's our main objective right now. Earl, you go out and meet Baker tonight. Now, I never saw you in a movie, so I don't know how you were, but this is going to be the biggest role you ever had, and if you're good at it, you can save Miss Sedgwick's life. <laughs> Scared? I didn't know you were here. Now, Pete told me to leave the horse a little way up the trail, just in case you'd come with a cop. Where's the money? I haven't got it. You... Pete told you what had happened to the girl if you didn't bring the dough. I know, but her family don't believe she's still alive. Sure she's alive. I seen her myself just before I left. They want some proof. How are we gonna prove she's alive without me bringing her back? They want a letter from her in her handwriting. And then they'll pay? Uh-huh. Pete ain't gonna like this. I can't get the money for you without the letter. What happens after you get the letter? I come down, give it to Mr. Sedgwick, and get the money. That means I gotta come down here again? Tomorrow? To meet you? They said to tell you either you do it this way or you get nothing. Pete told me to get the money and bring it back to the house. Now you ain't got the money. I guess I gotta bring you back. Hey, Pete. Pete. Okay, Charlie. Now, let me take that blindfold off. I didn't think you'd be... 
Hey, what's he doing here? I didn't bring the money. Why not? They want she should write a letter saying how she's okay. They don't believe she's alive. Didn't you tell them she was? I didn't know whether you'd killed her after I left or not. Now we gotta wait another whole day. Do I get the letter or do I go back and say she can't write? I don't like this. I told you Pete wouldn't like it, didn't I? Shut up a minute, Charlie. Try to figure out what kind of a game this guy's playing. What's the answer, huh? I'm not playing any game. You're a liar! <laughs> if my... Now what is it? If my hands weren't tied, I'll let you... <laughs> Lift them up, Charlie. I'm going to work this. Hold it, both of Huh? Who are you? A special agent of the FBI. I'll get warrants here for your arrest. You stupid dope. You let him tail you here. Nobody tailed him. He's right, Baker. We didn't tail you. We didn't have to. Charles and Peter Baker were convicted and sentenced to 25 years in prison for draft evasion and violation of the Federal Kidnapping Act. Special Agent Jim Taylor was able to follow the trail of Charlie Baker and Earl Douglas because as that pair made their way up the mountain to the cabin, Douglas dropped bits of phosphorescent paper which had been given to him by Taylor. Upon reaching the cabin, they found the Sedgwick girl unharmed. And thus, your FBI was able to close another file a file which had been on the books for five long years. While it is the hope of the Federal Bureau of Investigation to close every case as soon as possible, time is never the deciding factor. Every file remains open as long as the criminal remains free, even if that period stretches, as it did once, to 16 years. There are still more criminals at large this very evening who have violated some federal statute under FBI jurisdiction, but wherever they may be, they can be certain of one thing. Your FBI is still searching for them. And before too long a time elapses, there will be a knock on the door, a knock which every criminal has learned to fear, the knock of an FBI special agent with a warrant for arrest. <laughs> In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's case from the files of your FBI. Now three final questions on the Equitable Society's Independent 60s plan. Well, Mr. Keating, I'm 26 years old. Shouldn't I wait a few years before I start one of these plans? Your Equitable representative will tell you that the sooner you start, the lower the yearly cost will be. Being young gives you an advantage. Well, what about life insurance I already have? Your Equitable representative will explain exactly how it fits in. What income will it give me in my 60s? Your Equitable Society representative will give you the exact figure. Either get in touch with him soon or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A story describing the relentless pursuit of two professional gun runners. Its subject, interstate theft. Its title, The Curious Cargo. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis. Your narrator was William Woodson, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is Your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at the same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Curious Cargo on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.